now we come to an extremely important property for of the Lebesgue integral, which is the monotone convergence theorem. And it says that if f n is a sequence of as a sequence of unsigned measurable functions such that f n is less than or equal to f n plus 1. So, it is an increasing sequence or non decreasing sequence of unsigned measurable functions and f is the point wise limit of these functions f n. Then the integral of f is equal to the integral the limit of the integrals of the f n s. So, Note that on the left hand side we have the integral of the limit n tends to infinity f n d mu and on the right hand side we have the limit n tends to infinity integral f n d mu. So, one can view it as the interchange of limit and integral signs uh, which is allowed when you have a sequence of non decreasing uh, unsigned measurable functions converging point wise to a function f. So, this is the interchange of limits and integration signs. So, uh, let us look at the proof for this monotone convergence theorem. So, first note that note that due to monotonicity monotonicity we have that since f n is less than or equal to f uh, this implies that integral f n d mu is less than or equal to integral x f d mu. So, of course, if f n is a non decreasing sequence converging to a function f then the limit uh, bounds all the f n's. So, we have f n is less than or equal to f and this implies by the monotonicity property that the integrals uh, also um, satisfy this inequality. Now, this sequence of integrals f n d mu is a non decreasing sequence since we also have that f n d mu is less than or equal to f n plus 1 x d mu. So, uh, of real numbers of course, of positive uh, real numbers uh, non negative rather non negative real numbers. So, the limit exists. So, limit n tends to infinity integral x f n d mu exists uh, in the extended real numbers which so it could possibly be plus infinity as well. But since it is a non decreasing sequence the limit must exist whether it is a finite no real number or a or plus infinity. So, this implies that the limit of n tends to infinity integral x f n d mu is also bounded above by f d mu. So, now it uh, suffices to prove the reverse inequality. So, to show that integral x f d mu is less than or equal to the limit n tends to infinity x f n d mu. So, to show this uh, reverse inequality we will use the following lemma which is the upward monotone convergence theorem for arbitrary measure spaces. And it says that if x b mu is a measure space and e n n equal to 1 to infinity is a non decreasing sequence of measurable sets 
measurable sets in X, then the limit of n tends to infinity measure of u e n mu e n is precisely equal to the measure of the union n equal to 1 to infinity e n. So, this is we have seen this result for um, the Lebesgue measure, but uh, just check here, check that the proof that we used for Lebesgue measure works word by word in this abstract setting as well. So, check that the proof for Lebesgue measure on Rd works word by word. So, it is uh, almost a trivial generalization for the upward monotone convergence theorem for the Lebesgue measure. So, we will use it and we will also use the fact that we have proved uh, re recall that recall that for a fixed simple function s the map uh, from e to for a measurable uh, set e in b which assigns this uh, set e the real number given by the uh, simple integral over e. So, we, we have defined the simple integral over any measurable set e and so we can associate to any measurable set e this number and this is this was is a measure on b. So, I left it as an exercise before and we will we are going to use these two results. The first is that the upward monotone convergence theorem holds and the second is that this assignment of a, uh, the simple uh, integral for a fixed simple function s to any measurable set this gives you a measure on the sigma algebra b. So, let us see how to prove the reverse inequality with these two properties. So, we have to show that the integral of f d mu is less than or equal to the integral of f n d mu limit n tends to infinity. So, let us fix, fix a simple function s on x such that we have 0 less than or equal to s less than or equal to f. So, we are going to use the fact that the Lebesgue integral of f is defined using simple functions uh, which are bounded above point wise by f. So, let us fix any such simple function uh, s which is bounded above by f. Also, fix a constant alpha which is strictly between 0 and 1. Now, if we define E n as the set of points in x such that f n x is greater than or equal to alpha times uh, s x, then this is a measurable set, this is a measurable set in x and we also have that E n is a subset of e n plus 1 since f n is less than or equal to f n plus 1. So, this is automatic and we also have, so this is the first property that e n satisfy and the second property is that the union of all these e n's n equal to 1 to infinity, this is actually equal to the whole space a x and this is due to the fact that f n converges to f as n tends to infinity because if we see on the positive or non negative real line 0 to infinity. So, let us say that we 
fx is some finite value fx and because we have chosen s to be less than or equal to f and alpha to be strictly less than 1 so alpha x alpha s x will lie uh, strictly below f x and so using the property of the limit we can find an f n x f n x lying between these two points for n large enough large enough because f n converges point wise to f so this implies that the union of all these uh, e n s is the whole space x now let mu s of e denote the measure obtained by uh, associating with a measurable set e thus uh, integral of s d mu so if you denote mu s the measure then we have that mu s of e n converges to as n tends to infinity converges to mu s of x as uh, using the upward monotone convergence theorem using the upward monotone convergence theorem that we just saw this is because x is the union of these e n's so therefore we have first that the integral over x of f n d mu is greater than or equal to integral over x of f n chi e n d mu this is again because uh, f n chi e n is point wise bounded over by f n so we have just used monotonicity and then or on this set uh, e n we have that f n is greater than or equal to alpha times s x so this is greater than or equal to alpha times s x or s chi e n d mu so now this is a simple integral because we have now a simple function s chi e n but note that note that chi a chi b if you take the indicator functions and of two sets a and b and you multiply them then this is the indicator function of the intersection so this implies that the uh, integral alpha s chi e n over x d mu is nothing but alpha of the integral s simple integral over the set e n because when you are considering the simple integral over a measurable set you just take intersections and so using this fact we can easily prove that uh, when you put chi e n and multiply with s you get the simple integral over uh, e n itself so now this is nothing but alpha times mu s of e n and now we can take the limit on the right hand side so this implies that integral f n x d mu is greater than or equal to alpha times mu s of e n now take the integral sorry the limit on both sides limit as n tends to infinity on both sides we get that the limit n tends to infinity x f n d mu is greater than or equal to alpha times limit n tends to infinity mu s e n 
but we have seen that this is nothing but alpha times mu s of the whole space x and this can be rewritten as alpha times x uh, the integral of simple integral of s d mu over the whole space x. So now note that this is valid this inequality is valid for all alpha between 0 and strictly between 0 and 1 and for all simple functions s such that 0 less than or equal to s less than or equal to f. So first we can take the limit as alpha goes to the value 1. So this implies that the limit of n tends to infinity x f n d mu integral is greater than or equal to the value at alpha equal to 1 which is nothing but this simple integral and so therefore since this is true for all s we can also take the supremum on the right hand, right hand side of the inequality. So this implies that the limit as n tends to infinity x f n d mu is greater than or equal to the supremum over the set of such simple functions which are pointwise bounded by f and you take the uh, simple integral of s and this is nothing but integral of f d mu. So we have shown the reverse inequality this implies that integral of f d mu is equal to the limit n tends to infinity of f n d mu. Now the monotone convergence theorem is a fundamental result in Lebesgue's measure theory of integration and we will use it over and over again to derive many more interesting results uh, as we go along. But the first corollary that interests us is the following. So if S n is a sequence of simple functions, functions increasing to f to a measurable function f. So all of these uh, are unsigned, unsigned and here also unsigned. Then the integral of f d mu is equal to the limit of the as n tends to infinity of the integrals of s n d mu. And we have already seen that such as increasing sequence always exists for an unsigned measurable functions. Therefore, we always have at least one sequence which with which which we can use to evaluate such an integral. So this gives the monotone convergence theorem gives you um, an immediate way to compute the Lebesgue integral in terms of increasing sequences of simple functions or even unsigned measurable functions. So the next result is called Tonelli's theorem. which is about uh, interchange of infinite series, infinite sum and integral. So this is about interchange of integral and infinite sum. So it says that if f n is a sequence of unsigned measurable functions, measurable functions, then the integral of the series given by summing up all the fn's d mu is equal to the infinite sum of the individual term by term integration. So this is about term by 
term allowing term by term integration just by taking a sequence of unsigned measurable functions. So let's see the proof. So first we have to show that this holds for finitely many uh, functions f f n. So we can start with two functions. So let f1 f2 be unsigned measurable functions measurable functions and because they are unsigned measurable there exists a sequence uh, uh, increasing sequences increasing sequences of simple functions phi n uh, let me write phi k k equal to 1 to infinity and c k k equal to 1 to infinity such that the limit as k tends to infinity of the phi k's is equal to f 1 and the limit of as k tends to infinity of these c k's is equal to f 2. So, this implies that the limit as k tends to infinity of the sum c k plus v k is equal to f 1 plus f 2. So, now if we take the integral of the sum f 1 plus f 2 d mu, then this is the limit as k tends to infinity of v k plus c k. This is by the monotone convergence theorem m c t in short. And we have seen in the corollary that we can take any sequence of uh, simple functions converging from below, uh, increasing sequence converging from below and then we will have uh, this formula. But now, so this is a, a simple integral. So, we can use the linearity property for the simple integral to write this as the sum of phi k d mu plus c k d mu and then we can take the limit inside because both limits exist. So, this is equal to nothing but integral of f 1 d mu plus f 2 d mu again by using m c t. So, because f 1 d mu is the limit of, of the first term phi k integral of phi k d mu and the f integral of f 2 d mu, d mu is the limit of the integrals of c k. So, we see that the linearity property holds this is the linearity property linearity property for Lebesgue integrals. Uh, we, we had only proved up till now the linearity with respect to scalar multiplication, but now using MCT, we have also proved that it is linear with respect to addition of two functions. So, this is a nice result and by induction, by induction, we have for any n greater than or equal to 1, we have that, uh, let me write capital N we have that the sum of n equal to 1 to capital N f n d mu d mu is equal to the sum n equal to 1 to capital N of the individual integrals f n d mu. So, now we can take the limit on both sides take limit as capital N goes to infinity on both sides. So, we get the limit as n tends to infinity x n equal to 1 to capital N f n d mu and this is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity n equal to 1 to capital N x over integral over x of f n's. 
the right hand side is already something we want which is n equal to 1 to infinity integral fn d mu on the other hand we can use the mct implies that uh, the limit as n tends to infinity of these uh, integrals sum n equal to 1 to capital n f n d mu is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity taken inside the integral n equal to 1 to n f n d mu because since uh, this sequence g n which is g capital n which is the sum over n equal to 1 to n capital n f n is an increasing sequence of measurable functions increasing sequence converging to the series n equal to 1 to infinity f n. So, we can interchange the limits in this case using the monotone convergence theorem. So, from uh, first equation and second equation we get the result which is that the integral of n equal to 1 to infinity f n d mu the sum is equal to the sum n equal to 1 to infinity of the individual integrals of f n. So, this is the Tonelli's theorem note that it was only allowed because all these f n's are unsigned measurable functions which makes this partial sums a uh, non decreasing sequence. So, that we can apply the monotone convergence theorem. Now, let me remark here that easy examples can show show the failure of uh, the monotone convergence theorem if you do not uh, assume that it uh, we have an increasing sequence of functions. If we do not assume uh, that the sequence of functions f n is increasing or non decreasing. So, let us see an example. So, we can take f n to be, so this is rather a non example. So, we can take f n to be the indicator function for the set for the interval n n plus 1. So, here x is r and you can take b to be uh, the Lebesgue uh, sigma algebra and mu to be the Lebesgue measure. So, for all n greater than or equal to 1 we can take the indicator function for the set for the interval n n plus 1. So, when you take the limit. So, first of all this is not an increasing sequence and when you take the limit as n goes to infinity of f n you get the 0 function because point wise this is this functions f n we say that we can say that f n s escape to infinity infinity horizontally. So, this is a horizontal escape to infinity and there are other uh, escapes to infinity that we will see later. So, in this case the point wise limit is 0 and if you take the integral of f n well it is a integral over r of d m f n d m. So, this is nothing but the measure of the interval that we have chosen which is n n plus 1 and this is nothing but 1. So, the limit is also equal to 1. On the other hand if you take the integral of the limit integral of the 
limit of f n d m over r then this is nothing but 0 because this is the 0 function. So, we see that the um, um, monotone convergence theorem fails when we have this escape to infinity problems and it does uh, when, when it does not satisfy the hypothesis of the monotone convergence theorem. Nevertheless, we still have an in a result which is called Fatou's lemma, but I will write it as a theorem here. This is called Fatou's lemma, which is that if f n n greater than or equal to 1 is a sequence of unsigned measurable functions, functions converging uh, well we do not need uh, to assume that it converges anywhere just uh, we have a sequence of unsigned measurable functions then the integral over x of the lim inf as n tends to infinity of these f n's d mu is less than or equal to the lim inf as n tends to infinity of the individual terms integrals integral f n d mu. Now, let us see the proof of Fatou's lemma which for which we will again use the monotone convergence theorem. So, if we let if we let for any k greater than or equal to 1, let us set g k to be the infimum of all the f n's for n greater than or equal to k. So, of course, g k is less than or equal to f n for all n greater than or equal to k by definition and so the integral of g k d mu is less than or equal to the integral of f n d mu for all n greater than or equal to k which means that the integral of g k d mu is less than or equal to the infimum over the set n greater than or equal to k of these integrals f n d mu. On the other hand, we have that g k is less than or equal to g k plus 1 because we are taking an infimum over a larger set for g k and so g k is less than or equal to g k plus 1 and uh, it increases, it converges and the limit of g k as k goes to infinity is equal to the limit as k goes to infinity infimum of n greater than or equal to k f n and this is nothing but the lim inf by definition of this f n. So, by the monotone convergence theorem we have that the limit as k tends to infinity of the g k is uh, the integrals is equal to the limit as k tends to infinity of the individual g k s and this is nothing but on the left hand side we have lim inf f n d mu and on the right hand side we have that we have the limit as k tends to infinity g k d mu but this is less than or equal to the limit as k tends to infinity uh, the infimum of n greater than or equal to k f n d mu this is what we have proved here right here. So, we have used this inequality here by monotonicity we have that the limit uh, for the first term on for the left hand inequality is less than or equal to the limit for the infimum over n greater than or equal to k of the integrals f n and this is again nothing but the lim inf of the numbers. So, these are real numbers 
and we have the by definition of limb inf this is nothing but this uh, limb k, k k goes to infinity and then infimum n greater than or equal to k so we have established fatu's lemma which is that the limit the integral of the limb inf of fn is less than or equal to the limb inf of the integrals of fn and this holds whether or not we assume that fn is a monotone sequence or not.